We're trying three dim sum places today from cheap, premium and in between. We have a hidden gem in an industrial area, a restaurant that has been stuck in time, as well as a modern, more luxurious dim sum as well. Food Finders! Welcome to Food Finders and we're back for another episode of Cheap vs Expensive. I saw the producer's notes and today we are doing dim sum. I, I can't wait, I can't wait. Why do you like dim sum? Because it's like a work of art and I'm a very small eater so I don't like to eat like big plates of things. I like like very small, delicate, exquisite things. So do you believe there's cheap and good dim sum though? Yes. I have only really exclusively eat cheap and good dim sum though. I don't go and seek out like the most expensive dim sum and want to eat that. Okay, rapid fire question. What does dim sum mean? Dim is small, delicate small things. It yeah, also means touch. I touch. Yeah, so you Your touch heart. the heart. Why do people drink tea when eating dim sum? It is a common drink. Like you drink tea when you eat bakute, right? The reason actually for that is the same. It's to cool their bodies down. Drinking tea with greasy food burns away some of the fat from your meal and helps with digestion as well. Why do most dim sums come in threes? To share with two friends. So only got one friend how? They're telling you to have more friends. <laughs> as a chef, when you plate food, it must always be in an odd number as well. So we always plate in threes also. Cause it's it's pretty. Because it's pretty? Yeah. <laughs> like, like when you look at it, you're like, oh, aesthetic. The number three is associated with new beginnings and life. While a lot of like Chinese superstitious restaurants don't like to serve dim sum in force because it's bad luck, it's say. Yeah. Okay, that's all the questions we have. Oh, yay. Let's go and eat. So we are at our first dim sum spot and it is the cheapest of the day. I'm currently sitting kind of like in a canteen that's overlooking the sky and it's at level 9. I don't even know how you guys found this place. Oh my god, the shoe mine is $3 eh. That's so cheap. Hey, you so their prices range around two fifty to four dollars, which in my opinion is pretty cheap. A good variety, all the classic hakao shu mai, cha shao pao, steam pork ribs, lotus leaf glutinous rice. One of my favorite fried carrot cake. I love the carrot cake with shreds of the radish inside. Then I kind of know like it's kind of homemade because a lot of the factory produced carrot cake, right? It's just like kui. It's like a mixture of lean pork and minced meat, which makes the shu mai like really juicy. And it has a bit of the shiitake, which is very fresh as well. It's so flavorful, like it's definitely not supplier. <laughs> I'm sure they have to add to make it themselves. It's a very authentic shu mai, very juicy. And the marination is not overly marinated. Not too artificial. But I think the skin is a bit thick for my liking. I prefer like very, very thin, delicate yeah. skin. They do their meats very well. They're just very good at handling pork. No, I think they're very good at their marination. Cause like everything is very nicely marinated. I have my favorite dim sum, right? But I also have my not so favorite dim sum. What's Jen's least favorite dim sum? Every kind of pao. Mm. This one is very handmade. Oh. Oh, yeah, I still don't like pao. I still love you! I'm super excited about this lotus leaf glutinous rice because when they peel open it right, the surface of the rice has like specks of green which means like it has been wrapped in this lotus leaf for quite a while. I was right, it has a lot of the lotus leaf smell. And the chicken and everything is all like small pieces separated quite well as well. The flavor is very addictive. This carrot cake, right? I already know it's going to be crispy. The blisters on the surface of the carrot cake. Like better, you mean better, yeah. The outside is like super crispy, but the inside is like very soft and like moist. I think this is going to be the best carrot cake of the day. I have not met another carrot cake like it. This is quite high on the list of good dim sums. I'm really quite impressed. 
and I was quite shocked that we'll find this here at this very weird unknown place in Bukit Batok. When I walked in, I wasn't expecting much. When I saw the price, I was like, okay, cheap dim sum. But this is like, it's really cheap and good. Just a quick disclaimer, the couple running a place are very, very old and the chef, I think he had heart surgery before. This place is sort of their retirement plan. They don't want to be found. I would appreciate if anyone watches this, like, don't come during peak hour. Just, we don't want to build the queue so much for them. Try to keep this low key. Also, don't like come and like, you know, scold him if it's slow or whatever. Do you want to take that? Yes. 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 This sums up the cheapest option for today and it's all priced at about $3. So we're at our second location and a very old school place. So I'm sure many people would know this name. It's Big Star Restaurant and they've been widely known for their dim sum and some say that they're the first who invented Yishun. Yishun is not a Chinese dish actually. It's actually like Singapore Malaysia invented. Really? Yeah. Oh shit, you know that. Master Chef Sing Leong, Hoi Kok Wai are two of the remaining members of the multi-award winning Four Heavenly Kings of Cantonese Cuisine who are largely credited for inventing the Yusheng as well as chili crab and yam ring. And the price point here is around $5 plus plus to about $6. If you are looking for variety, they have a lot. <laughs> so we were greeted by the Lao Ban Ezi Hall and he was introducing to us some of the more unique dishes that he has. It's called cotton chicken. Cotton chicken. Yeah, not so common in Singapore. It has a layer of fried fish maw mm. at the bottom and then you have a couple of of slices of uh, chicken and then another one fish cake steamed with a black bean sauce. This restaurant was set up by four chefs. In the past, they each have their own restaurants. They came together to set up this restaurant but unfortunately, two of them have already passed on. Mr. Simyong and Mr. Hui are the surviving ones. So Mr. Simyong is my father. For me, it's less than a week, both of us. Oh, you just joined? <laughs> yeah, we just joined. Oh. I formerly was a teacher, Tomasi Polytechnic. Oh, you taught at Yeah, I teach culinary <laughs> science. I want to try shumai first. The shumai is comparable to the first one. It has like the handmade texture, nicely marinated. Your hakao, let's see if this is a better hakao. It looks better. How the skin looks very, looks very thin. The hakao has more of a sui jing, Skin taste. Yeah, the skin is like more glassy and chewy. Oh, oh my god, it's just coming out. Ah, ah, my fingers. Is it hot? Liu Shang Pao is the only pao I like. And this pao is more moist than the previous pao. So we're gonna try the congee. Oh my god, you know congee, right? You know the top layer? I love eating the top layer. Number one, it doesn't burn your tongue. And then there's like a layer of like glutinous. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Yes, you can. Oh, yes. Let me introduce you to my colleague, Chris. Oh, Chris. Okay. Very, 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 I feel like it's already quite marinated. It's very different from my usual chicken skin. You know what the flavor tastes like? Korean fried chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Hi Korean. Hi Chinese. Chipaloma. Chipaloma. I'm gonna try the mian hua ji. It's a whole chicken leg that is steamed. Because the chicken is slightly marinated, it's really tender and soft. And then the fish maw is also very like chewy and spongy, right? When you eat both together, it has like this mian hua ji texture. So I think this dish is a lot about texture. But the flavour is very typical, it's like steamed chicken. Of my fish knowledge, I know this part is like the belly part. Air vent. <laughs> oh no. It's nice though, the black bean marinade is really good. Chives dumpling. A very good sui kao. They have their rendition of xiao long pao. It looks more dry. Yeah, but there's like, I think different style xiao long pao. Maybe a more Shanghai style where it's like a dry xiao long pao. Mm. No soup, right? No soup. This is like a really good yam pao. Like the yam is very flavorful. I think in summary, Red Star Restaurant is a tried and tested 
very long history restaurant and every single dish is like kind of nailed by the book lah. It's kind of like a go-to dim sum place if you're just looking for simple good dim sum. I feel like they put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into all the dishes and it's being helmed by very passionate families as well so I can taste the loss that they kind of want to put through and we're gonna go off to our last and most expensive dim sum tier place so let's go so we are at our final spot and it's the highest priced dim sum of the day East Ocean Teochew Restaurant it has a history of about 35 years in Singapore and the prices are around $78 actually not too bad yeah okay to be fair there's like a lot more expensive you heard about a lobster lobster half go for like $34 why are we not there? <laughs> clearly I can't afford it that's why <laughs> we are gathered here today for the animals of East Ocean little penguin Mrs. Seahorse we have some little dogs here the extinct dinosaur that we have here. Actually, this is what I really love about dim sum in general. The creativity is through the roof. We heard from the manager, right? Like the reason why they wanted to do all this cute dim sum. We can see patients come in, they have a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, but some children, they don't like to enjoy the dim sum. So there was a thought to do some cute dim sum, dim sum, dim sum, dim sum, to attract the children. I'm not sure as a child what I feel about eating the head of a puppy. Let's find out. I would just like to highlight first that this hakao is the most beautiful hakao of today. Like it's so nice. That's how it is. The skin is super glassy. This is why I like hakao. The prawn is very... There's like two prawns inside here. This siu mai is like a hakao bro. There's like one big prawn inside. It's a pretty decent siu mai as well. And it's like big pieces of prawn. Big pieces of meat. So it's like very worth the money. The flavours here are very delicate. You can taste like the premium ingredients. Does it taste like a hallmark taste of true Chinese tradition? Maybe. So they are polo pao. You know why is it called polo pao? Of pineapple. Why not? It's a really good polo pao. Why is it called polo pao? Because the crust on the outside, when they baked it, looks like the pineapple skin. Is it the skin or is it like the inside? It's a crust. It's a cookie crust. Oh my god, he doesn't even know and he tries to lecture me. It looks nothing like a pineapple or something. The chashu filling is a very good flavour and the crust itself is super crunchy. But like the top is small. This one is a very nice bite because it's so small and the crust is quite flaky but I wouldn't say like there's a lot of like buttery flavour To put it simply, it wouldn't be my best tanta la Carrot cake is my favourite I already know this doesn't have the same crisp factor but let's see if the filling comes true for us Mmm, <laughs> the fluffy mushy texture it's a contender. All it's missing is the crispy exterior. But not bad. This one has more flavour from the lap chong. It got the back fin. It got the head fin as well. Not sure. That's you. Oh, what? Does it taste like grape juice? No. It's curry. Huh? It's curry? It's like curry crab meat. It was damn nice. It's like a potato nugget. The crab meat tastes like Japanese curry also. Little Bigfoot. Now we shall decapitate it. The skin is like mochi. Oh, is it like a hard towel or anything? No, oh. it's like um mochi, mochi okay. like glutinous rice. Two more animals to go. Let's go. Penguin, Mr. Penguin. Why you split it right down the middle? Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna tear it down the middle. Auto Oh, it's basically sweet mantou. I think there's like a whole macadamia nut inside. Dog dog. Dog dog. Chi goro. Chow, you ma. I feel like Nori Papi, right? The head is like, there's like nothing inside. Let's find out. I'm not sure as a child what I feel about eating the head of a puppy. Mmm. It's not sausage. It's really the sausage inside. All the animal shaped dumplings, right, is really, really dedicated to children. But I'll be so chuffed if I got this as like a 10-year-old kid. Oh, because it's hot dog. That's why it's a dog. Oh my god. 
and just got it. <laughs> Number one is very fun to eat. The chef definitely put a lot of thought into like what would look good to a kid and also what kids would like. Because the one thing I was concerned with is that if the flavours are too like adult, right? Like it'll be cute, but then they'll eat into it and then they'll be like, eh, you know? And like especially if you want to have like good dim sum along with like fun things to do for your kids, right? Quite a good mix lah. I was quite shocked when I saw the menu as well. It wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. I think they give quality along with the value lah. Shall we end off with a Kung Fu Cha? No, we need to end off with a special promotion. Oh, what? So, what? East Ocean will be having a mooncake promotion in August. Up to 25% off during their sale period. Check it out on their website. Back to Kung Fu Cha. Oh, oh it just showed. So, and it's very far. It's very nice. <laughs> So that's it for East Ocean Teochew Restaurant. So let's go ahead and sum up the... Wait. To sum up or to round up, round up today's dim sum. Jen, which is your favourite dim sum spot? I felt that the first one had very good quality and very good value. I think Red Star has a very, very old name. They definitely have perfected the art of dim sum. I would say every single dish that was put out there tasted like Hong Kong. For East Ocean, I would think that it's for like the refined palette. The dishes are less heavy. And of course, like the highlight would be the animal dim sum. I think it's really, really good for like families. Very good for children. TLDR, would you refer? I think Red Star. I, I think it's nostalgic. I love the dim sum cut. That was really, really a nice touch. That's it for this episode of dim sum comparison. This episode yeah. of like cheap versus expensive isn't really that not extreme enough. Extreme enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see like more extreme. More extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone has suggestions on what's like affordable dish and then like a extreme expensive version, we'd love to explore that more. Do remember to like and subscribe. Any last words, Jen? Are you a naughty puppy? What? <laughs> If you can identify as a dim sum, what will you identify as? Can I be a siu mai because I'm meaty? I would identify as a ha kao. It's very cute. It's widely loved. <laughs> so I hope that I'm widely loved. Crystal skin ha kao. So I want to have crystal skin as well. What are the prawn inside though? Prawn is a high-end protein. I'm a high-end protein as well. Prawn compared to pork. Oi! Prawn is more expensive. Yeah.